Today we're going to be taking a look at one of the most well-made and highly sought after replica helmets on the airsofting market, the Dragon Red Fast Maritime Helmet. What's up airsofters, my name is Lane and welcome to the BB Warrior. We're here to help you have a better time both on and off the airsofting field. And if you enjoy videos like this, I'd love to have you join our community by hitting the subscribe button down below. And while you're down there, make sure to hit the bell icon for updates when we post new videos every Tuesday and Friday here on the channel. Now, the first thing I want to mention about this helmet, because the first thing that you notice when you pick it up, is just how heavy this helmet is. This helmet has a fantastic shell on it, which really sets it apart from its competitors like Lancer Tactical, 6mm Pro Shop, Valken, those sort of helmets. Those helmets feel really cheap because they don't have a lot of weight to them. They honestly feel like part of a Halloween costume. Well, that isn't the case with the Dragon Red helmet. It has a nice thick shell. I'm not sure if you guys can see that right now. And this it just, it feels like it's high quality. And it's something that you notice when it's in your hands or when it's on your head. This feels like a really nice and really well built helmet. And that's something that I really have to applaud Dragon Red on. Now their hardware on here is no exception. Their arc rails and their NVG shroud are made of a very high quality plastic. Um, now I would trust these with a huge amount of weight. Like I wouldn't trust this with a PVS-14. I did run a PVS-14 on this helmet and it did hold up. There wasn't any like buckling in the shape of the shroud. It didn't come loose, anything like that. However, I definitely advise that if you're running actual night vision, buy a real helmet. You can get things like an MSA helmet, an OpsCore helmet, or a Team Wendy helmet for a, less than $100, up to $250 if you want like a really fancy helmet. And those will work so much better because they're designed for that sort of weight. Airsoft helmets aren't exactly prepared for that amount of weight, despite what brand helmet you get. Even if you get a really nice helmet like this or a JC Airsoft helmet, they're not designed to hold that amount of weight. So if you're going to be running real night vision, I would wholeheartedly suggest buying a real helmet, and I don't think this would be for you. However, if you're using this for typical BB Wars where you're not using night vision or you're using like cosplay night vision, this is an absolutely fantastic helmet. Now I want to compare this to the JC Airsoft helmet real quick. These are both really high quality helmets on the airsofting market. However, the JC Airsoft helmets don't have the best hardware. Their arc rails and their NVG shrouds buckle under some pretty underwhelming weight. Like, I've seen them have issues with their shroud and GoPros, and GoPros don't weigh much. Or their arc rails with contours, what they start to do is once they have that weight on there, they kind of like buckle out from it. And that, that, that's really upsetting, and you'd think that right out of the box you wouldn't have to replace those two things. But that is a reality with the JC Airsoft helmets. I'd love to get one here and do a comparison side by side with you. Maybe I'll be able to do that in a future video. Who knows? Now I want to talk about the shell again. This is a really, really high quality shell. I cannot get that point across enough. I've hit my head on with this helmet on a lot. I've hit pipes. I've hit branches. I've fallen over because I'm clumsy. And this has taken some real good hits and it's protected my head from a lot of those things. Yet, I have not had a single chip, any marking, any cracks in this shell. I mean, the paint has a couple of scuffs on there, which I'm not really sure if you can see that on the camera. But the paint and the overall quality of the shell have been fantastic, and I haven't had any issues with that myself. Rounding out the outside of the helmet, you do have Velcro, which will run all the way across the top and across the back, like a real ops core. Now, I should mention, again, just with the quality of this helmet, that Velcro stays nice and put. I mean, I've seen some of the other helmets, kind of like the arc rails on the JC helmets, when you start to put something heavy on here, like a counterweight, they just kind of like come off, like the glue can't hold it enough. And I've never had that issue with this helmet. This is a very, very nice helmet. But as much as I am saying nice things about this helmet, I do have some concerns with it. The main one, and the main thing that I really don't like about this helmet, is the padding. And no one does good padding on an Airsoft helmet, except for JC Airsoft. They do really fantastic padding. So, the padding in this is overwhelming, or underwhelming, I should say. The issue that I have with it is that when you start to sweat, which is something that's going to happen in an Airsoft helmet regardless, especially for guys like me with a little bit more hair on their head, the foam-ish stuff that they're using in this... It absorbs all that moisture and it just shrinks. So instead of it kind of having like some pushback when I squeeze on it, it just stays scrunched up and it stays wet. And that gets absolutely disgusting smelling. So 
I'd really advise, if you're going to buy one of these, buy a set of Team Wendy Zap Pads. Now, I mean, it's kind of inexcusable to have to buy other things right off the bat. I mean, this is a moderately comfortable helmet. However, once you start to wear this for like an entire day at a Milsim event, if you got this really kitted out with a GoPro and comms, battery pack, strobes, it can kind of become uncomfortable. Something they did do to remedy the comfort or the comfortableness of this helmet is they do have a um, OCC dial, I believe that's what they're called. So by adjusting this to the left or to the right, it'll tighten or loosen the helmet's fit on your head, which is important because again, once you load this up, if your helmet's too loose, it's gonna bounce around like that when you're running instead of it being tightened correctly with an OCC dial where it just moves with your head and it's not gonna be too tight on you either so you don't get a headache. Now, the other thing that I don't like about this helmet is the chin strap. I don't know if you guys can see that, but it's like a worn down like pleather material. It's just fake leather and it gets really slimy with sweat. And this chin strap gets really uncomfortable because of that sliminess and then it starts to chafe and it's just really, really uncomfortable. So, I mean, there are a few things to change out on this, but I mean, they're kind of minor issues that aren't too big of an issue. I'm kind of nitpicking on the chin strap. I do think that this could use better padding, which I think Dragon Red should include. This is already on the kind of high-end price range for a helmet, so I think that adding on an extra five to ten dollars for good padding wouldn't really hurt Dragon Red to do, but we'll see in the future. And finally, I want to talk about sizing. Dragon Red does really, really good on their sizing in the fact that this isn't made for people with tiny heads. This will fit someone with a medium to large head like myself with really, really accurate sizing. So the issue with a lot of airsoft helmets, like again, 6mm Pro Shop, Valken, Lancer Tactical, is they're small. And I've actually seen people who have taken out some of the foam on here, like not the padding, but the foam itself to make it fit their head better. And a lot of companies need to start making stuff in U.S. sizing. Now, I understand why they don't, because this is all made overseas, and they're making it for people that live over there who are typically built smaller than people over here in the U.S. or the European Union area. But having these larger sizes would be fantastic, not just in helmets, but plate carriers, uniforms. I mean, I can't tell you how many knockoff uniforms I've gotten where they're just like five inches shorter than what they'd be in the U.S. equivalent. And it's really... Is really disappointing and I think I want to talk about this more in its own video but Dragon Red does a really good job for those of us with a larger size head. Now JC Airsoft does as well however we're not reviewing the JC Airsoft helmet. Let's recap. The Dragon Red Fast Maritime is an excellent feeling helmet. The quality is really really nice on this helmet whether it be the shell or the hardware and the only things that I'd recommend replacing off the bat on this helmet is going to be the padding and maybe the chin strap if you don't like how it feels. Overall, you really can't go wrong with one of these Dragon Red helmets. That's going to do it for this video, though. If you enjoyed the video, I'd love to have you join our community by subscribing down below. And again, make sure to hit the bell icon next to it for updates when we post new videos every Tuesday and Friday here on the channel. If you haven't already, make sure to follow us on social media. Links will be down below the subscribe button so you can check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. I'm having a lot of fun on Twitter lately. I didn't know what I just do with my hand, but I am having a lot of fun on Twitter with you guys. This has been Lane from the BB Warrior talking about the Dragon Red Fast Maritime Helmet, and I will see you all next time.